Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, the Paris.com, and thank you for being there. Uh, I won't be the one presenting Camilla Labs. It, you will have the honor to have the presentation from Andre Dibé, which is the CEO. And he will basically explain you how uh, uh, we want to put back the finance at the service of the real economy, uh, thanks to blockchain and what we are doing with Camilla Labs. Andre, please, the floor is yours. Thank you, Don Diego. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. I hope you are enjoying your stay in Paris this week, if you're not from Paris, of course. Uh, and uh, I will be presenting you today, uh, like uh, Don Diego said, how Kamea Labs puts back uh, the financial sphere uh, at the service of the real economy. And by the same time, uh, I hope that you will understand how Kamea Labs will also onboard the next million users on Polkadot and without even uh, them knowing anything about that. But first, let's rewind a little bit and let me show you the landscape of investment uh, today in 2023 that is still the same for like 10 generations. You have to know that uh, in the investment sphere, most opportunities are still uh, reserved today to professional investors, to put it really simply, to the top 1% uh, richest people on this planet. And unfortunately, retail investors uh, like um, probably most of us in this room, are excluded from most of the opportunities, uh, especially uh, when trying to interact with professional asset management, for example, by investing in an investment fund. And when we research a bit the reasons for that, we actually uh, understood that asset managers and investment funds would also like to uh, tap into retail capital, but they lack tools, uh, to do it today. So to be a little more specific about how the investment landscape works today, uh, we have done a non-exhaustive uh, landscape of who gets access to which opportunity. And as you can see, retail investors have mainly access to opportunities they have to manage themselves, thanks to uh, exchanges and apps that lets them buy publicly traded stocks and publicly traded cryptos, and thanks to self-custody and uh, uh, self-custodial wallets, uh, for a really short period of time, they have been able finally to invest themselves uh, in new early projects. But when you see accredited investors that are really the, the top 1%, uh, they have access to a whole ecosystem of professional managers that manage for them their liquidities and their funds, and uh, especially they have access to VCs to early stage fundraising uh, with people that are professionals of the sectors, so who know how to do returns when you are investing in the riskier class, the riskiest class of assets. And you have one boundary between the two, uh, which who, who are the banks, but you have a separation between the banking products that the retail investors have access to and that the accredited investors have access to. When you're an accredited investor, when your bank account surpasses 1 million euros, uh, you will get a call from your, bank, uh, your banker that will offer you a lot of wonderful banking products, making maybe 20% a year, but you will never uh, hear of them uh, if you are a retail investor. But at the same time, if you read the SEC report on private markets that uh, is issued every year, you can see that we are expecting retail investors to enter professionally managed investment, private markets, primary markets, and VC fundraising, uh, early stage fundraising in the next couple of years. And at the same time, a study with asset managers and investment fund shows that they actually want to expose uh, their assets to retail capital, even if they lack tools and knowledge to do it today. So the TradFi tried to invent a solution to uh, bridge people to private markets and early stage assets uh, through uh, an, uh, a mechanism that is called an SPV, a special purpose vehicle, that basically lets uh, people unite themselves in one pool of capital uh, to be able to put their money together and invest more effi efficiently. But the problem of that is that the boundary between what is an, um, a community of people investing together and what is a professionally managed fund 
is actually super thin. So it's risky when you do this kind of operation not to be requalified as an investment fund, which usually means that you have high penalties, your business can be shut down, and you can even go to prison uh, for this. So to be able to bypass uh, the regulations on professional asset management, uh, what SPV providers do is actually offer one SPV per deal that is uh, did this is executed with a community of investors so they multiply the costs they multiply the operations and they uh, in the end have a governance for each SPV that is really chaotic which in the end doesn't solve the problem of onboarding people in private markets so we have thought of the problem from a completely different perspective at Kamea Labs and we have invented a three pillars framework that's entirely based on public blockchain uh, and that will be able to democratize private markets. So the first pillar that we built is a way to democratize self-custody. The fact that everyone will keep uh, his assets and funds at all time in uh, his own account. And for that, uh, we have thought of a way to be able to offer people self-custodial wallets that are at the same time safe in the sense that if they lose their access to the wallets, they are able to recover their assets without compromising uh, by giving their private key to a centralized actor. So we will be able to explain a bit more about that a little bit uh, after. Then we added a tokenization layer that lets uh, any entrepreneur or asset owner tokenize any kind of real world asset and directly put legal value, legal representation of the real world asset on the token uh, that has been emitted to represent this asset. And finally, we have bridged those two uh, bricks with uh, a proxy management protocol that actually lets an asset manager uh, manage by proxy wallet of his investor without at any time uh, asking for their private key or as asking for any access. And this, by the way, has been approved by the French regulator through the DASP uh, registration which is one of uh, the most difficult uh, regulator in, uh, in the world. And uh, the combination of those three bricks uh, will offer an investment infrastructure where um, compared to the traditional way where you had to pool your funds and assets and give the, cost, the custody of those pooled assets to an asset manager, uh, so he is able to invest on your behalf uh, to buy assets, to invest in assets. We have created an infrastructure with this, those three bricks where you have every investor having his, his own wallet and account. Uh, he will always be the only person being able to access this account. And his funds are managed by proxy by the same asset manager, but without ever uh, being uh, in charge of taking custody of the funds and pooling them to invest. And in the end, entrepreneurs who tokenize their assets uh, for their investment deal uh, actually can sell those assets through the proxy link directly to uh, non-accredited retail investors. So the advantages of that, of course, is that thanks to self-custody, you have better uh, security for your funds. Uh, but uh, the, real, uh, the real revolutionary feat of this infrastructure is that since you do not pull assets nor take custody of them. Uh, as an asset manager, you are actually in another regulation that, do, that the ones that uh, are uh, over um, regulated funds, you are in regulations that actually lets you manage by proxy accounts. And this is the same uh, types of regulation that exists for, for example, service providers on Forex exchanges or on crypto exchanges that lets you share an API key to manage uh, your account by proxy. So we did the same, but directly on decentralized wallets. And you don't need to share your private key to be able to access that kind of system thanks to the proxy, uh, the proxy solution. And the way that we want to bring that to the world is through an investment platform connecting entrepreneurs raising funds that will have access to increased liquidity thanks to this framework. Uh, retail investors or any kind of investor actually wanting uh, to access more opportunities, especially private and primary opportunities uh, that will have access thanks to this platform to 
a whole uh, new range of investment products. And finally, asset managers that are able, uh, after all this time, to uh, finally onboard retail capital in their operations, which is uh, really difficult, not to say impossible today, without this kind of infrastructure. So to be able to bring that to the world, we have a really long way uh, in front of us. The first uh, step that we did was develop an infrastructure letting uh, entrepreneurs raise in peer-to-peer -peer directly with their communities of investors. Uh, and this is we where we are right now. And now we are expanding this infrastructure uh, to let DAOs, investment DAOs, be able to directly organize themselves in self-custody to operate uh, investments without ever pooling the funds, uh, simply by uh, executing their governance model. And every time an investment is bound to be made, the transactions are executed from each wallet of each member of a DAO. Then we will add the proxy, uh, the proxy protocol that will be able to link wallets from asset managers to wallets of their LPs. And finally, we will add the tokenization feature so we can distribute this whole framework on every asset class. In the end, when we'll have all our tools, we'll be able to platformize this solution and distribute it to the whole market, meaning uh, DAOs, club deals, angel networks, but also investment funds, uh, VCs, uh, Web3 asset managers, etc. So just a little zoom on what we already it's a really simple prototype that lets an entrepreneur raise funds with, it, with his communities. So as an entrepreneur, you actually deploy a landing page that is specific for your token sale, for example, uh, and you let investors onboard themselves directly uh, in, the, uh, in uh, a fundraising by choosing the payment method. So investors can pay in fiat currencies or cryptocurrencies. Uh, then investors pass a KYC. They sign the legal documentation for the fundraise uh, they are investing in. And finally, they execute the payment. In five steps and less than five minutes, they become token holders or soft owners or safe owners or equity holders of a company, which is really simple, but uh, really a uh, game changer for people raising with a lot of investors, which is often the case in Web3. And just to show you who is going to pay for that kind of solution, it is mainly the VCs, actually. Uh, retail investors will always have only a, por a really small portion uh, of their transactions that goes into our business model. And the ones that really deploy the infrastructure, so professional investors, are the ones that are actually funding the whole solution for uh, all the stakeholders of the solution. And to be able to execute such an ambitious project, since it has the ambition to a revolution uh, the way we do investment to put the investment power, the financial power in the hands of everyone instead of the top 1%. We have a team that's been into Web3 for quite some time now and that has diverse backgrounds in the real world. Uh, for myself, I'm a Lebanese Canadian entrepreneur. I've been living in France for 10 years. I'm an engineer, uh, but I have, uh, I'm in the project, I'm the CEO. I have, re, uh, I have shifted to business and finance. Uh, and my specialty is uh, financing, funding with startups, and finding in France public funding for startups. Uh, Don Diego Sanchez, or Andrea <laughs> Vistoli, is our CTO, and is actually uh, one of the oldest member I know of the Polkadot community, uh, member of the Chaos DAO, member of many other initiatives in the ecosystem, and actually advisor at Logan Network, uh, who is also a project, a parachain of uh, Polkadot uh, that we use in our backend to, uh, for everything that they are able to bring on chain, which mainly is uh, a legal link between tokens and the real world. Constantin, our COO, is uh, an Ethereum uh, early adopter. He has been in the sphere since 2016 and is a member of a lot of DAOs and private communities around Ethereum. And finally, Sebastian who is our uh, director of risks and compliance, is one of the oldest uh, Bitcoin holders I know, not in his age, but in the sense that he bought Bitcoin in 2013. And he actually founded the blockchain lab at PwC, helping uh, the biggest banks and companies in France and Europe on their uh, blockchain projects. And you already have investors in our uh, cap table, 
such as Nicolas Baca, who is co-founder and inventor of the technology at Ledger, uh, but also a head of product at Revolut, uh, or at VP at CMA CGM, which is one of the biggest uh, company uh, for transportation, which is not in our ecosystem, I know, but it's really good for business-wise. So thank you really much for your attention. Um, I will be happy to answer questions if you have any, and feel free to stay in touch. Uh, all our information is listed here. If you have any uh, question or uh, business initiative that you would like to do with us, don't hesitate to reach out. Thank you very much. Thank you, Andre. Thank you so much. All right, I'm just having a look how we're doing for time there. Um, yeah, you just finished on time, so unfortunately, no time for questions. No questions. There, apologies, but if you do have a question, grab. Uh, Andre. You can reach out uh, to me later if yeah, you want. That's great. Thank you. A great intro, Don Diego. <laughs> Wonderful job, brother.